Hi, my name is Mike, and in this video we're going to be replacing the serpentine belt on this 2016 Toyota Corolla. The belt is located on the passenger side of the engine compartment. You'll see it down there where it wraps around the crankshaft, air conditioning compressor, water pump, and alternator. So at first I was a little bit confused on this vehicle. I'm used to my Chevys where they have a belt idler and tensioner pulley. So on this vehicle, the tension is actually held in place by the alternator. So to remove it, first we need to remove the top cover on the engine. I was a little confused at first how to remove the top cover on the engine because there's no apparent bolts on there. And it's actually just held in place by some little sort of I guess you could call them like a tension retainer and to remove this you just kind of grab it from anywhere around the edges and lift it up and it'll pull free. I'll flip this over to give you a little bit better view of how it's held in place. Where it just has these little pins that fit into these holes and hold it into place. With that cover removed, you can now see a little bit more clearly the bolt that is holding the tension on the belt and how it would adjust forward and backward to increase or decrease the tension on the belt. The replacement belt I purchased for this vehicle is an AC Delco 6PK1222 and you should be able to buy these at most auto parts stores or Rock Auto or Amazon.com for under $20. Hopefully this is the right belt. There are different belts depending on the configuration of the engine. This is the four-cylinder Eco engine. Some of the non-Eco models and some of the other different variants of this vehicle use different type belts. You will also need a standard socket wrench with a 12 millimeter socket which just goes right on there to adjust the tension. One tip I can pass along is to mark the position of the belt tensioner before you begin loosening it and to do that I'm just going to use this sharpie here and I'm just going to draw a couple lines on the screw on both sides so that I can see where it is currently and get it adjusted back into this position. There are two additional bolts that you will also need to loosen to allow the alternator to swing on its bracket. The first is a 12 millimeter bolt and it's located right here behind the adjusting the tension adjusting bolt. The second is down at the bottom and it's what allows the alternator to pivot. Something that helped me was to loosen this air conditioning line right up here. And that allowed me to reach down through this area with a 14, 14 millimeter bolt on a breaker bar to get that bolt loose. You can see a little more closely with the camera off the tripod down here at the bottom of the alternator. Using your 12 millimeter wrench, you want to turn the adjusting bolt counterclockwise. That loosens the tension and allows you to swing your alternator in to adjust the tension off the belt, which will allow us to slip it off from the alternator and the remainder of the accessories. Here's the old belt removed side by side with the new belt that we're going to be installing. Before you get too far along in this process, it's usually a good idea to just hold the two belts side by side and make sure that they're matching sizes. Now obviously your old belt may be a hair longer than the replacement belt, just if it's gotten stretched, but they should pretty closely match in length in order for this to be the correct fit. Again, as I mentioned, there are different belts for the 
different uh, models of four-cylinder engines, so you want to make sure you get the correct belt to fit your particular vehicle. One other tip I can pass along is one of those accessories down there, the water pump, is smooth, and you want to make sure when you are routing the belt that the belt goes, the smooth side of the belt contacts with the smooth pulley, and the grooved edges of the belt contact with the grooved pulleys, which in this vehicle, the crankshaft, pulley, the alternator, and the air conditioning compressor are grooved, and the water pump is smooth. Once you've got your new belt lined up, you want to really get down in there with your flashlight and make sure that it is properly wrapped around all of the accessories before you tighten it up. The tightening process is basically the reverse of the removal process. I've already actually done that on mine, but you want to just tighten this until you're pretty close to where your, your mark you made previously was or until the belt feels tight. It, you might not go quite as tight on this, remember, if your previous belt was stretched out a little bit. So you want to make sure everything is properly around the accessories. Then you want to tighten that down. One other tip I can kind of share is that it's, sometimes it's easier to get it around the grooved accessories first and then pull it around the smooth accessory, which was, as I mentioned before, that water pump between the air conditioning compressor and the alternator. So get everything in, get your belt in, get it get it, the tension properly put on it with this bolt then you need to take your 12 millimeter and your 14 millimeter bolts get those all nice and tight make sure your air conditioning line here is properly snapped into its little clip that holds it in place and I'm gonna go ahead and start it up now just to test it before we put the cover back on in case we need to make any additional adjustments Okay, everything sounds good, so we can go ahead and put the cover back on and close up this project. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please like and subscribe to my channel. I try to do a lot of different car repair videos, computer repair videos, stuff like that and it would really help me out a lot. Thanks again. Have a great day and stay safe out there.